Hey guys, Zach here with another YouTube video. It's been about a month since I, a uh, little over a month since I got back into uh, custom action figure making, set and dial making, and started a YouTube channel to go along with it, and also a Facebook page. And in addition to posting on this YouTube channel and on my own Facebook page, Tin Stat Toys, I've also posted a lot of stuff on several different other forums and sites, uh, Mezco 112 Collectors, of course, Articulated Comic Book Dial Structure, and a few other custom action figure pages. Now, when I started this channel off, uh, I started it off with a action figure review of the bootleg Mezco 112 series Punisher action figure that I was going to use as the basis for my custom figure that kind of started all of this that I've been doing. And I didn't want to do a figure review channel because there's a lot of other people out there that do figure reviews and they do better figure reviews than I do. I wanted this to be about the materials that I use and the tips, the techniques, and the tricks. And mainly I wanted to focus on the fact that I'm getting back into this and there's a lot of stuff that I've forgotten and a lot of stuff that I'm going to have to relearn from when I used to be good at this as a kid. And I want people to see not only where I succeed, but where I made mistakes or failed at something and have had to fix it. Because something that I've noticed by looking at a lot of these pages on Facebook and a lot of the comments in some of the YouTube channels is people thinking that maybe they're not creative enough to get into this and to enjoy this hobby because most people wait until they're really good at it before they start putting their work out there. And hopefully by watching this, you guys will see that you don't have to be particularly artistically inclined to have a lot of fun doing this and doing kit bashes, action figure photography, dial making, and you don't have to have a lot of money either. Um, you know, I cut corners on my dials so that I can have money for action figures, and um, I got a lot of positive feedback on this uh, gun store dial. Now, you can see it's kind of barren in here. We're doing a little bit of a remodel and a, a inventory control uh, like we would at a real gun store. And I decided that I have enough room in the top and I had enough fun with this that I'm going to add a second story to it. And it also gave me kind of a cohesive theme behind my future customs. Uh, the idea that I had started with was kind of a 2000 AD Judge Dredd Blade Runner mashup outside of Texas City with a Wild West motif especially since I live and work out here in West Texas. And um, so this week, because of my arthritis, I took a break from doing any kind of custom work. Uh, mostly it was just kind of a loot haul work for, uh, loot haul week for me. And I did some kit bashing. I got some McFarland military figures off of uh, eBay that I've started kit bashing, slowly taking them apart. I'll get into that here in just a minute. And then I got some Jonah Hex figures. I got a really good deal on these on Amazon. There's not a whole lot of Western-themed action figures to go for. And I don't know if I'm going to actually kit bash them or leave them as is. They're, they're different enough, and they're actually pretty cool. And I'll get into kind of a halfway review on those in another video. But when I posted my stuff on Facebook, the majority of the comments that I got were in reference to the dial about the wood finish on the floor and on the walls. Of course, this was actually balsa wood, popsicle sticks that I cut and, and, and glued on with some Krylon Easy Tack. And this was cardboard that I made to look like wood paneling. Uh, I had a lot of people ask about that uh, on Facebook and friends that uh, follow my channel. So I'm going to do a quick deal on that. And then the second most asked question I had was about the guns. And I'm going to go over how I did the guns and how you can do the guns in a cheap and efficient fashion. And not just for a gun store, but any of your armory deals, uh, dios, things that you make. How you can really flesh those out and just have a crap load of guns. Because most of them are going to be in the background and not seen. And you can still have what I call your hero pieces, the guns that are fully made... They're well done. They're what's going to be seen in the photo. And you can use these to make cheaper guns to stock up your background with. So instead of having to spend a buttload of money on getting action figures so you can get 50 of these different guns, 
Um, I'm going to go over how I use some casting materials right now. Uh, I talked about this in another video, but I'm still using the Alumalite putty. It doesn't give as much detail as the silicone does, and for the 3D guns that I would want to use in photo shoots, I'd definitely go with the silicone or any of the heads or anything like that. But for the background stuff, especially if it's just going to be a two-dimensional cast like a lot of these are, where it's just the one side because the 3D cast didn't work out, but you still got a lot of detail on one side of it, this is perfect. And uh, this is basically what the molds look like. They look like little pies over here, and just pull them apart, and you've got... You've got one side of your gun, you've got the other side of your gun, you take it out, you clean up the flash, and you go from there. Now we're going to put this to the side real quick, and I'm just going to show you briefly how I did the uh, cardboard. Now I've already measured it out, and um, I always give myself a little bit of extra room, because you can always take stuff off if it's too big, but it's almost impossible to go back and fix if you've cut too much off. I'm going to start on this side because these are the panels that I need to finish the right wall of the die that wasn't completed in the last video and hasn't been completed by me now. So I've measured everything out. I've got my guard up top. I've measured out half inch increments for the wood slats because that's what I wanted to. There's a little less than a half inch there so that'll be the side that goes to the wall that you don't see as much. Let's take my box cutter now. I need to probably get a proper uh, cutting mat. For hobbying but for now these little cheap um, plastic cutting boards we get them in a little five and dime up in the DFW Metro called Daiso they're a few cents a piece and I've got a bunch of them that I can go through so I take my box cutter get everything cut down to size I'll put that up and I'll take my ruler I've measured everything out Take my X-Acto knife. Now, I'm not trying to cut all the way through the cardboard. I use corrugated cardboard for this. I'm just trying to score it. I move my ruler down just a little bit more. Cut another score line in there. Now, I'll come down to the bottom here. Make sure my lines measure up so my cuts are going to be even. Just run it through here a couple times to score it nicely. Move over to the next one. Make sure my lines line up on the ruler so that it's even cut. Score it a little bit. Like I said, we're not trying to cut all the way through, so don't put too much pressure on it. And again, you want corrugated cardboard. That's the stuff that has the little wiggly, squiggly lines in the middle of it. Now that one was a little uneven, but that's okay. Just like Bob Ross. No mistakes, just happy accidents. This is out in the Wild West. Or some space western-ish town like uh, the Firefly Universe where uh, maybe the work was done a little sloppy and hurried. Now we'll go, we'll go clean that up, score that up a little bit better. We got our last line here at the end to score. And then, once I've got everything scored, what I do is I take my dental tool and I start just kind of working in here to push everything down. Now, when you stick the dental tool in here, and this tool comes, any, any set of dental tools you get off of anywhere, Amazon, eBay, whatever online site you use is going to come with one of these little dental picks. And I just kind of run it through there. And you'll feel which direction this wants to go in so that you don't really ruin your cardboard, okay? And you just kind of run it, run it through there until you get these lines defined. Get your little definition in here. You'll feel which way it wants to go. Just run it through. It's not very hard to do. The smaller the slats are, a little bit harder it gets, but still doable. Make a couple of passes. I got a little bit of fine grit sandpaper that I use on my guns. Just take that sandpaper, rub it over it, rough it up a little bit, and then you can cut it. You can paint it whatever color you want. Like I said, I'm going for kind of a black and white comic theme with this. And so now that it's been roughed up, that's all you do. You take it outside, spray paint it, and this is your end product in here.
and that's how I did the walls. And if you don't want to cut balsa wood for the floors, you can do the same exact technique for the flooring with a piece of cardboard. Same exact technique will work, you just need to make sure that it's corrugated cardboard. Now, moving on to the weapons, what I've done here is I've cast a series of weapons in both black and white resin. Um, well, I, I do like the Illumilite mold putty. For everything else, the silicone and the resin mix, I prefer to use the uh, smooth on, one to one mix ratio. It makes my life simpler and it creates a much cleaner product. The, um, the Illumilite resin gives you a funky yellow color, which I'll show you here when I dump this bag of goodies out. It gives you kind of a funky yellow color. You can tell just by looking at that which one of these came from the Illumilite and which one came from the smooth on. And uh, this one I've touched up with a little gray for the magazine. Um, you can do that if you want. You don't have to. But on the back side that nobody's going to see, it's just plain black. But this can be put on the gun wall. As you can see, it looks just like an M16 in there. Nobody's really going to know the difference. So if you want a fully stocked arsenal for your Punisher, your Deathstroke, your Deadpool, that's perfect. Now some of the AK-47s that are uh, three-dimensional for the army builders, again, they don't have to be perfect and they don't have to be extremely detailed. Nobody's going to really see them up close. Now, of course, I haven't removed the flash, sanded this down, or done any kind of painting on it like I had with a couple of the other ones that were actually in the dial the last time I showed it in my last video. But, and the way that this will work is all of my black guns are going to go on the back wall there where it's a little bit white and they'll stand out more and I may take a little bit of white spray paint to that mesh to make it uh, a little bit more contrast more of a contrast or some gray and then all of my white guns are going to go good side facing up obviously on the uh, inside the gun cases and when I get my handgun cases made they're gonna go inside the handgun cases and I've already started casting some of the guns from uh, Jonah Hex I've cast some of the other guns that I have some of the Blade Runner blasters and uh, again you know this side didn't turn out very well El air bubbles you know I'm learning how to cast but it's not worth throwing away because I can clean this side up make it look good and when you just see that one angle from the gun case, you're not even going to know that the other side is messed up. And uh, that's how I stock out my gun store, guys. A little bit of a, a Lumalite casting putty. Um, that's maybe, it's less than $20 on um, Amazon. And you can make, uh, I mean, this is this is probably, all of these molds right here is probably one... 15 to 17 dollar jar and everything that you see here has been cast from all of these molds and it's just a giant pile of guns and like I said when they turn out okay and you can use them for army builder guns because the 3d molds worked out good like this one here worked out pretty well for me needs a little bit of touch up a little bit of paint the AKs all seem to work pretty well then uh, throw them in your little henchman's hand and your goons that are going to be kind of blurred out in the background when they're fighting your guys and the ones where you only get a two-dimensional work on, um, clean up the side that looks the best and put it in your armory. And that's it. I uh, appreciate you guys watching this video. Um, one of the other comments that I had was about uh, buying bootlegs and stocking up for your figures and accessories for custom builds. I'm going to address that in another video that I do. But thank you for watching. If you have any questions, uh, post them in the comments below or visit me on my Facebook page, 10 Star Toys. I will get back to you. Um, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I can't remember your name, sir, but to the gentleman that posted if I was going to do a video review on the Mezco Bootleg Daredevil 112 edition, I have found one, and as soon as it gets here, you'll have your video, sir. I will do a review of that. And in the meantime... Be safe, treat other people the way that you would want to be treated, and remember to stay hydrated. Thanks for watching.